All right. Well, let's get started here. Um, first off, thank you all for uh, for joining this uh, info session here. Really excited to um, to be able to share a little bit more about us and what we do and really why we do it. Um, in addition to answering your questions, which I um, I think is probably the most valuable part of of this call. And so, um, as a, a, a housekeeping, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we have a, um, there's a couple different uh, features here within, uh, within the Zoom webinar. Um, so one of them is the chat feature, which you might be um, really familiar with um, from, you know, from any of these services. Um, the other is a Q&A. And if I could ask that you um, utilize the Q&A, um, I will uh, try to answer those as quickly as possible. We also have uh, my colleague, Aaron here, who uh, will help monitor that as well. Um, I, We'll make sure we get through everything um, as quickly as possible, uh, and I'll try to answer things. Um, I try to answer things as they sort of uh, come up, um, and certainly as they do after the presentation. But um, what I'm hoping to do is just spend maybe the first ten minutes, kind of providing a little bit of an overview, um, and then we'll we'll dedicate them a lot of time to uh, to Q and A. So I am um, gonna get started here. So um, my name is Matt Urban. I should change my uh, name here so you guys can see that. Um, but I am the uh, Director of Marketing and Admissions at New Apprenticeship. Um, so i like to start the presentation with a little bit of an overview, but Really, the, thing, the most important thing for me is the why. And I think that's, why do we do what we do? Um, and I think it's the most important thing for, for all of us here. Um, you, are, you all know better than us, right? That, that hiring for tech doesn't work as it's currently designed. Um, there are um, sort of archaic systems in place that uh, don't, we don't think they do the best job of, of recognizing and understanding where the really talented people are um, to be able to provide them with an opportunity uh, to start a career. It's further demonstrated if you look at what the makeup of tech employees are. Um, and so that's what we are trying to solve a little portion of, I think, um, what new apprenticeship and why we were designed, why we're kind of built. And, you know, we, we, we've I think look at ourselves as that bridge um, between um, you, the experiences, the, the skills, where, where you are, and, and employers. And that's the thing that um, everyone knows, right? You're seeing it on probably job applications and, and everything is like, hey, this is entry level, but you must have two to three years experience. Um, and we know that it is a vicious cycle because no one can get experience if no one will give them a chance. And so that's, that's why we work with organizations we think are really innovative and have recognized this and said, you know what, there's a better way to do this, and we want to be part of the solution, um, not part of the problem. And so that's, that's what we do. We, we partner with these uh, organizations that are, are willing to, um, to look at this hiring model uh, differently. Um, through apprenticeship and say, okay, great. We recognize that, um, that maybe the, the, the apprentices are going to come in and they might not know everything, um, but we know that they have a good enough understanding. Um, they have some skills to be able to, to come in with, um, but that recognize that they're going to be learning uh, in a really fast rate, both through on the job, as well as apprenticeship learning over the first um, the, the first year of being hired. So that's, that's what we do. And, and that's kind of why we do it more importantly. Um, so this pathway, right? Um, this pathway, this bridge, this is, this is kind of a, a breakout of the, the different elements of it. Um, so uh, one of the things that you know, I mentioned new apprenticeship, the role that we play, um, part of this is um, in some skill development, uh, providing some of those early, those, those kind of core uh, technical skills. Um, a part of it too is in coaching and mentoring. I mean, we wanna provide a comprehensive picture that, um, that addresses all of, um, 
not only what what employers might be typically typically concerned about with, but what are some of the the, the typical roadblocks or inhibitors for uh, people who are just starting in tech, and that is not just skill based. It is, um, you know, it could be leadership, it could be communication, it could be uh, a lot of other things. And so that's what we try to to wrap all up into our apprenticeship, um, which then, of course, uh, is that is that connection to our employers. And so, um, so that's kind of the, the what the pathway looks like. Um, I always like to, to start off with qualifications, the program qualifications first, um, because they are not, it's, it's almost the opposite of what you might see in some job postings. Um, uh, one of the, the big things to call out, I think, is that uh, for a lot of our programs, having attained a bachelor's degree already, um, unfortunately, would uh, disqualify uh, you from participating. And so I get... Um, we get questions around, you know, hey, if it was a, a bachelor's degree 10 years ago in a non-technical field, you know, does that still disqualify me? Um, as, a, as a general rule, yes. Um, you, if you have some extenuating circumstances um, and you want to try to, you can send us an email, let us know, hey, here's, uh, here's some more details. Is that something that um, would I qualify? We'll be able to try to check with our employers to make sure, um, but it is a, it, it's more of an exception uh, rather than the rule. Um, same thing with uh, if you've, uh, where we see more of the exceptions are if a, uh, you possess a uh, bachelor's degree, but from a foreign country, um, those are, uh, if you could send us some of the details on that, again, we'll, we'll do our best, but part of what we, how, part of how we operate um, is with, is by we operate by the roles that are available uh, by our organ or by our partner companies. Um, so we're not really in the business of training people to then send them out and try to you know find other jobs with other employers, right? That's there are plenty of boot camp uh, only organizations out there that do really great things, and so. But that's not who what we're doing. We're we're doing these. We're running these boot camps as part of a specific training to prepare people for uh, for an interview with our partner companies, so that they can get hired and start the apprenticeship process. Uh, so, a couple of the other program eligibility, just uh, uh, to be aware of, uh, because it is all work related, you have to be able to work in the U.S. Um, uh, probably uh, self explanatory, but. Um, unfortunately, our partners right now are not sponsoring visas. Um, if that changes, we hope to, uh, we'll be able to notify people. But at this point, um, having that work eligibility and, um, and not needing sponsorships are the requirements. And then um, having a minimum of high school diploma or equivalent. Um, and then lastly, this sort of re relevant certifications or technical foundations, um, we try to we try to keep the, the the core skills necessary to start the boot camp at least um, as low as possible, um, and and that's because we don't want to create barriers for people to enter, um, even if they haven't had the opportunity to um, study some of these programming languages or receive some of these certifications. Um, now that said, if you haven't in the admissions process, um, if you don't have these skills, what we'll do is send you a, an email with a project. Um, with some resources, um, okay, how do you develop this skill set quickly in order to be able to advance in, in, into the boot camp to continue building on those skills? So a typical timeline here, uh, we, we start with between a two and three month um, boot camp, uh, which we'll go into a little more detail about in a second. Um, then that progresses to the 12 month apprenticeship. Our apprenticeships are US Department of Labor registered apprenticeships. Um, for those that are uh, know the, the, what that carries, the weight that carries and sort of all the different things that we need to do in order to be able to have that status with the Department of Labor. Um, but one thing here, you'll note that this full-time employment starts right at the same time the apprenticeship does and continues beyond it. And that's because these aren't temporary contract jobs. These are, you're applying as a W-2 employee and being and hired. And, and the hope is that um, you stay, you remain an employee uh, for with the partner companies beyond the apprenticeship. You continue to grow there 
Um, and so, so that's kind of the intent and that's um, where we think the apprenticeship can be so valuable. Um, there's also this continuing learning and education here. Um, it's just something that's we, we build into everything that we want to do. I mean, that's what apprenticeship is, is, you know, this continual um, education in addition to experience. And so that's something that we, uh, we really try to stress and call out. Um, we have some, uh, we have an articulation agreement with um, Southern New Hampshire University for some of our apprenticeship programs. Uh, we're basically at the completion of the apprenticeship. Uh, based on some of the certifications you've, you've earned, you can um, go through the process of um, enrolling with Southern New Hampshire University, um, where you can earn, you can transfer some of those, those transfer what you've learned into credits towards completing a bachelor's degree. Um, so it's another really cool part. It's a, um, you know, a, a degree apprenticeship is really what we're um, striving to become in that um, people you're you're able to learn, experience, get experience, and and continue your uh, informal and formal education. So um, the expectations that I want to um, just want to talk about here because this is pretty intense learning. Um, it is you know technically the boot camp specifically is you know is part time. It's about a fifteen to twenty hours, um, but it is it's definitely really intense. And so um, that's not to deter anyone from wanting to participate or um, continue to move forward, uh, but it is to try to set the right expectations. And so one thing that we've seen um, is that the people who, uh, not everyone will struggle, but, um, but definitely some people will. And the, the people who are best able to overcome that are the ones who right away kind of raise their hand, um, say, hey, I, I need some help, I need some support. And that's what we are here for, uh, rather than waiting you know, a week or two and then feeling lost and trying to get caught up, um, really just, just being able to ask for help right away when you, when you need to or when you can. So the apprenticeship uh, journey is this, you know, this, this pre-employment boot camp. Um, at the end of it, um, we can't guarantee jobs. Um, unfortunately, what we can do is guarantee interviews. Um, we can guarantee at least an interview with our partner organization after you've completed boot camp. Um, and then those that are hired begin the apprenticeship program. Um, this is where you've got coaching and mentoring, technical skill development, leadership, um, everything I've just been kind of talking about. You'll earn certifications along the way as well as this Department of Labor certification uh, at the end of the 12 months, and then continued employment, continued education. On um, the, um, the boot camp training, so getting a little bit more of the details, um, it can vary slightly depending on the program, but um, we have uh, these eight to 12 weeks, um, this of the skill building. Um, it is essentially, um, we do this Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, a similar schedule from uh, 6.30 to 8.30 Eastern time uh, standard. And that is about that six hours of uh, video group training here. Um, and then the other time spent is working on portfolio projects or um, studying for different certifications, working through some of the different uh, training modules. Then the apprenticeship operates pretty similarly. Um, the big difference is that you'd be full-time employed, you know, working Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, the investment of time scales back a little bit, um, but it is still, uh, it's still pretty intense. It, it still is a uh, definitely full-time week plus an additional 10 to 15 hours um, that where you continue to learn, um, grow, uh, and um, earn certifications, things like that. The uh, one of the things I think is really different about our program um, is the coaching system, uh, the mentoring, um, the, the the coaches that we have. We have kind of performance coaches and leadership coaches. It's something that we're really focused on because, like I mentioned earlier, we don't. It's not just technical skills that can be cha a challenge uh, for anyone in their jobs. It's it's oftentimes the other things, and that's why we want to have a, a system, a sort of a structure to be able to support some of that. Next steps here, um, you already probably are uh, familiar. Most of you are probably already applied, but there's uh, an application, then an admissions project if necessary, 
um, scheduling an interview and then um, kind of hearing back for uh, a decision and then an upcoming um, start date. So I will um, say here for sure that we have uh, seen interest uh, actually raise 850%. I did the, the numbers here um, not long ago that we were receiving uh, eight and a half times the number of applications from just last quarter uh, to this quarter. And so we are doing our best to try to get through and keep up with everyone. Um, we're probably not doing a great job. Um, so I, I appreciate your patience. Um, we, we, I know our interview calendar um, is, has been booked out completely um, six weeks out. Uh, I think we're now maybe down to like four weeks out. So I think we're, we're working on adding more availability um, and, and kind of opening up some spots. But, um, but I, I, I do uh, ask if you are in the process that, uh, you know, your patience is, is greatly appreciated as we, um, as we try to, to get to work through um, as quickly as possible. So that, um, that is uh, more time than I wanted to spend on this kind of presentation. Um, so I think what I would do right do now is try to jump into um, some of the, the Q&A. Um, uh, so I appreciate you guys bearing with me as I made it through there. Um, so we have questions around uh, remote. And that's um, a really important uh, piece to, to discuss and talk about. So there's two different aspects of the apprenticeship, right? There's the kind of learning, the coaching, the mentoring, um, the things that uh, we at New Apprenticeship uh, provide. And then there's the actual employed job, W-2 job uh, that you're working with uh, our employer companies. And so everything that new apprenticeship does is remote. Um, you're able to participate remote. However, the jobs themselves, the majority of them are in person. Um, they are in office um, that at, at our locations, um, you know, through our, our partner locations, uh, they, were, they were remote temporarily through COVID, um, but uh, the, the majority of them now are in person, um, in office, kind of live, you know, live in live in office. So um, that has to be the expectation um, that I want to set for everyone, because um, you know, if it does end up something happens and they want to go remote or it ends up being a hybrid, that'd be great. But um, but really, anyone who wants to participate should expect that the roles would be um, in person. We have another question around. Um, so I'm gonna. Um, we have another question around back-to-back uh, -back boot camps in different programs um, from uh, for double seats. Um, I I'm I'm not sure if the question means running them simultaneously um, or if the question is around running one, um, then running another, and then doing another um, afterwards. Uh, to answer the first question, uh, it would it would be impossible to do both simultaneously. Um, the the uh, sessions run at the same time, um, and so it, you wouldn't be able to do both simultaneously. Um, however, if you go through one boot camp and you interview and you aren't you aren't selected for a job, um, and you want to do another program, a boot camp, um, there's nothing that would prevent you from doing that. Hopefully, that answered that question. Yes, another question um, around uh, AWS specifically, and and I, I do want to address this because we had a recent update here. Um, I think it's important that I give a few minutes, um, dedicate a few minutes to to talk through um, for anyone who might be on the, the AWS track. So, um, well, I may be, I think I mentioned earlier. I tried to men I may have mentioned earlier that we run this apprenticeship. Um, you know, kind of operate the boot camp and the apprenticeship based on available roles, right? We're, we're, not the, we're not a boot camp, in which case we're just say here is training and you know, good luck. Um, we operate everything based on the available apprenticeship roles that our employer partners are telling us like, hey, we need these number of people at these locations. Um, so we, um, for AWS specifically, have reached a point where we do not have um, 
we do not have confirmed demand. Basically, we do not have confirmed jobs beyond what we've already taken in. Um, so we've started some people in that training program. Um, that's already been sort of those spots have already been met for the open roles. Uh, so at this point, we do not have any more confirmed yet. Um, so we do not have a launch date, another launch date for AWS set yet. Um, what I would, based on history, what I would expect is that um, the, the, the roles that we do have um, that have already been um, either interviewed or hired for, typically we're going to see our employer partners say, okay, this is great. Now for the next quarter, these are the roles that we have open in these areas, in which case we are going to, uh, for, any of, for anyone who's already been in the process, um, or you know, we will then give priority to those folks to be able to start that upcoming cohort when we do have it. Um, for, um, for those that haven't yet sort of going down that path, what we're trying to do is provide oppor other opportunities. Um, and so one of the things that, um, that uh, we have, another program that we have still availability and confirmed jobs for is the uh, data apprenticeship. Um, and so they actually, the, the core uh, technical skill foundation is pretty similar between that of uh, a data on AWS. And so um, if you are someone who is kind of pursued down the AWS path and you've been given a notification that, hey, unfortunately you don't have right now the roles um, available. You have the option of course of, of waiting. Um, and like I said, we'll notify you as soon as possible. Um, the other option, if you are interested is you can pursue you know, the data apprenticeship or uh, our other apprenticeships, assuming that there are the open roles in the location or locations that you're um, able to work at. And then we can try to get you um, get you started in in a program that um, you know faster that that fits sort of your career goals. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, the next question here. Oh, a, a follow-up question looks like on the AWS availability. Um, yes, we will update the apprenticeship or we'll update the uh, website when it's available. Um, to be honest, I'm anticipating um, that based on the number of people who have already expressed interest, we probably we will reach out to them first before we put it on the website. So uh, we'll send out an email or some communications that say, hey, these locations and seats are open. Uh, we really want to prioritize that for uh, people who have already started down that pathway first before um, putting it out on the website, but we will definitely send communication um, to everyone when that is. Uh, this is um, a, a question around um, communication after sending in the application. Um, one of the things that uh, we, we shoot for response um, really on 48 hours is our, is our goal. Um, it's been, as mentioned, it has been, we've been really more delayed in being able to get that. Um, however, if it's been, you know, four days, you know, three, four days, even a week, and you haven't heard anything, um, the first thing I would just ask is if you're able to check your um, spam or promotions folder. Um, sometimes that we, we find that we, uh, our communications get sent there um, when we think we've already replied and someone says, well, you never sent anything to me, um, it ends up just getting caught up somewhere before it delivers. So, um, so that would be what I would first ask if you guys could do. Um, then if not, uh, please you know, continue to email us. Um, we have, uh, we're, we're working towards, we're, we're all chipping in to uh, work towards answering uh, questions as soon as possible. Again, I know it's been delayed, um, but uh, but we are we're putting concentrated effort into be able to get um, to get everyone uh, responded to and, and and move to the next part of the process. We have a question around um, how people are matched to interview for apprenticeships. Um, it's a great question. So. What we looked, what we look for, is um, kind of a combination of, of things, and we recently overhauled our application um, to enable people to um, to 
show that they're interested in multiple apprenticeships. Um, so we know that it is not all, you know, people aren't always just interested in one and we didn't want to have uh, people submitting multiple applications, getting multiple follow-up emails on different tracks. And so um, we combined it into one. And so what we'll do, or how we get kind of matched or what we want to do is basically look for uh, the, the best match around existing skills that you may have um, based on your application, uh, the different location or locations that you're able to work at, um, and then of course your preferences. So we're going to look to see first if you have a preference um, within a specific occupation, um, then we're going to send you for that preference first. Um, you know, ideally it's going to be you'll have the skills and the preference already, and then we send it to you. If not, um, we're going to look to see well, okay, there's no preference, but here's another availability. Um, so then we might say, hey, you know, unfortunately, uh, we don't have uh, an opening for you in AWS in your location. However, we do have an opening in IT. If you're interested, here's kind of the next steps. So um, it's just kind of based on preference and um, availability in, in different locations and, um, and, and also existing skills. Um, great, we have a question here, and thank you guys for, uh, for I'm going to try to get to these questions as fast as possible, and I appreciate it. Um, we do, we have a, a specific program question around a cohort, uh, the data cohort uh, for uh, the 18th, for April 18th. Um, yes, it did, uh, the, that cohort, um, it should have been communicated with already. Um, that cohort is um, pushed back to this Monday, this upcoming Monday, um, the 25th. Um, so that um, I, I, I'm, we'll, I'll circle back with our um, with our program team uh, to see uh, to make sure that that is um, communicated again and figure out what happened. But yeah, for those specifically on the um, the the data cohort, um, the data apprenticeship, um, our next start is this Monday, the twenty fifth. Um, had a question around um, uh, around uh, programs being rejected, uh, being rejected from programs. Um, there is um, the most likely reason to be rejected from a program, especially if it was pretty quickly, um, was that it did not uh, meet the the requirements. And so, um, the uh, having possessing a bachelor's degree uh, is one um, that in many cases, like I said, would disqualify people um, not having work authorization in the US or, um, or needing sponsorship. Um, those kind of core uh, pieces are, are the most likely reasons that um, people would be um, would be disqualified. Um, another possibility that isn't quite a, a disqualification, but um, if there are if there are no program matches, uh, basically if you're you know you're you're in Hartford um, and you want to do X apprenticeship in Hartford and we don't have a match, um, then uh, you would get an email that kind of said, hey, unfortunately this time we don't have a program match for you based on your criteria. So um, hopefully that helps answer um, that question. Uh, we have another question around um, relocation if um, if hired. Um, so I, I want to say that the majority um, the majority of our employers um, do have that expectation that um, the the office the role would be in office. Um, for some people, if you've and have already gone through the application process and um, are in the program or kind of committed to it, um, there had been some remote roles. Um, and so um, there's a chance that uh, depending on when you went through that, that there would be a remote role, but, um, but really that would be uh, kind of a, a, a rare uh, or more or less common instance. And then, like I said, everything moving forward, um, the expectation would be that it would be need to need to be in person. A uh, question around um, uh, starting and then um, and then not completing. Um, so the the way that we have this set up, um, and I, I actually didn't even say this in the presentation. Um, there's no cost uh, to this. The 
um, the cost is actually um, the, the, the program is sort of paid for by uh, either our employer partners and or um, grant funds that are available. Um, so one thing that I, I should really mention if you do move forward um, with this program, one of the things that we ask that you do is if you are in an area where there are uh, workforce boards or uh, grants that are available, that you go and submit your paperwork, uh, that you work with those organizations, um, because that grant funding um, helps us operate this program. Um, it helps us continue to operate this program without having any sort of cost to you guys. Um, and so for people in the future, right, you being able to go through and um, work with those organizations to be able to get grant funding um, just helps out everyone in the future, like I said, be able to keep us be able to keep this running at a, a no cost to our apprentices. Um, and so the, the question specifically was, what if, you know, I go through and it's not for me or, um, you know, uh, God forbid something happens, right? And you need to, you need to drop out of it. Um, really, what we'll do then is uh, try to work with you first to see like, hey, is there, you know, would you want to start a later cohort or is there an opportunity to start to sort of start a little bit later? Um, if there's not, though, we will just um, kind of end the relationship. There won't be any sort of like um, payment penalties or you're not going to get hit with a bill or anything like that. Um, yeah, we just uh, we'll just we'll just work with you to try to to get you back in the program when you're able to. Um, great question uh, from someone around accelerating the boot camp. Um, unfortunately, there's not. Um, there's not a, a, a standard way. Now, there might be some outliers um, in where we might be able to accelerate an interview, um, but for the most part, um, I, it would be it would be the exception rather than the rule. So I, I would rather set the expectation that there's not a way to. Um, to accelerate the boot camp. Um, a question around uh, specifically the next digital marketing program um, start date. Uh, that is something that I hope by the end of this week um, to be able to set that start date. Um, I would, my best guess right now would be um, uh, probably mid to late May, um, but I think uh, I've been communicating with our team from um, our, our, our team that works with our employers to understand the open roles and, and things like that. And so um, that is something that I'm, I'm shooting to have uh, this week, that date is. Uh, regarding the, um, I had a question around the, the competency project, um, that would, you would expect to see that within, um, within, one to two days, typically two to three days. Um, we call it one to three days. Um, if you have not seen that, again, check your spam or promotions folders. But um, if you still haven't seen that, please send us an email. And like I said, we'll we will get to it as soon as possible and try to be able to, to, to send that to you. Um, another a question around um, AWS. Um, specifically, and so um, really, and actually, let me answer this in a in a in a, in a general way as well. Um, the question is that um, somebody asked that they are they have an interview scheduled for a program, um, but haven't yet had the interview, haven't yet been accepted. Um, where what does that mean, and where does that leave them? Um, so, unfortunately, what it it means that. Um, we are, you know, for AWS or for any of our programs specifically, either at a program as a whole or for by location. Um, what when we've reached that kind of maximum, um, it pretty much means that those seats are that those seats are all taken. So, um, you know, if you have uh, for AWS, for example, you have an interview scheduled. Um, what we're going to try to reach out to do is, is say, hey, here might be some other opportunities for you. Um, uh, if not, if you're not interested, though, um, we'll just keep your information kind of on file. And so that 
um, as mentioned earlier, once those roles are confirmed and those seats are available, we'll send an email out to you um, first to be able to get back on the pick up exactly where you left off, right? So um, complete that interview um, and be able to get into that next um, that next group. Uh, a question around uh, best way to prepare for the interview. Um, there are um, there are not multiple rounds. Actually, there are um, well for the for the for the digital marketing apprentice or for any of our apprenticeships, um, we do we do one interview. Um, what I would say the the best way to prepare um, uh, number one, just knowing like hey, why does this apprenticeship? Um, why is this important? To you? Why is this something that you need? Um, you know, being able to articulate, um, being able to articulate that, I think that is a, um, uh, a huge part, um, not only to our interview, but to the interviews that you're gonna be doing, you know, you do with a partner employer, um, really being able to say like, yes, this is what I wanna do. Um, and here's kind of how I've demonstrated that before, right? We know you haven't had the opportunity to get the experience in in the past and that's okay. Um, that's what we're here for, but um, but just being able to say that like this is this is why I'm interested. This is kind of what I'm done. Um, I have the ability to commit to this. Demonstrate you can commit to this. Um, you know the time, the space. Um, that's if you can do those things, um, you, you're you're generally going to be pretty good. Um, we have uh, another question. It looks like it's, it might be being answered already, but just as the interview calendar, um, I mentioned earlier that we had, it had it wasn't too long ago where we were just totally booked out. In which case, the system then says, "Hey, um, look like there is not anything available. Email people, um, email the administrator to try to get it set up." And that has been extremely challenging for us to keep up with. Um, I hope that. Um, we're now have freed up some interview times. And so if you were to go back to that link, uh, I believe now that we, um, we do have availability, um, but uh, I, I think the, the best way we're continuing to, to work to clear up space, to add, to add times to that. So um, you can definitely email us, but the best way is probably to kind of continue to check that periodically to see if things were added or opened up. Um, question around um, the uh, assessment tests. Um, so all the programs have um, have something. Um, all the well, all the programs have a sort of baseline, either sort of skill or demonstration of um, of knowledge or um, uh, competency, something like that. Um, it's possible that um, through the application process, you've already you already have that. In which case, you wouldn't need to take any sort of assessment around again. Um, but, uh, but if you, so if you haven't seen something like that, it may mean that you've already met that um, minimal criteria um, though. Uh, but if you don't have, you know, have any experience in or any sort of um, applicable skills in that area, it's very likely that you would receive um, a follow-up with the project for um, demonstrating the competency. Uh, okay, so we have um, some, um, looks like a couple questions around specifically um, the uh, cohort, some of the specific cohort questions as far as like um, what's full and what's still open. Um, I, I, I unfortunately can't answer it. Um, I can't answer it as a blanket statement because um, part of what the, the, there's the overall kind of cohort cap, um, but then we also are looking for um, specific locations, right? And so um, if, if someone looking in um, Houston, for example, um, was something where uh, we have seen incredible interest um, and, uh, and, and demand for, um, we've gotten, I think at this point for at least our IT program, um, we are like at or above capacity um, for that location. Now, um, if you're looking at an IT program in Arizona, for example, um, there are a lot more, a lot of seats available for those Arizona jobs. And so you guys can, you can see how it gets a little nuanced. And a lot of it is just based on 
um, those work locations and, and the number of available roles by those locations. And so um, I see that uh, the, this person has already emailed um, in, in attempts to, uh, to move up. I um, appreciate your uh, persistence and um, and definitely we're going to try to get to that as soon as possible, but it does not hurt to, um, to, to continue to ask for sure. So again, thank you for your patience. Um, had another question here and hopefully I'm getting to the, um, getting caught up to the questions. Um, the, um, uh, looking at the, didn't see the IT uh, developer program available. Um, that should be listed. That should be listed. Um, I can check after this to see if something happened or if for some reason it is not, um, it's not listed or available, but, um, the, uh, one of the things that, um, the only thing that I can think of is, um, on our, uh, in some of the materials, it's called the service now, um, developer apprenticeship. Um, that's the, the service now is the platform, um, you know, much like an AWS would be for um, for cloud. Uh, service now is the platform that is used in which um, our apprentices then work and um, develop uh, on. So, if you see service now, if you're looking for IT and you actually see service now, it's the, it's one in the same. So maybe that was the maybe that's where the confusion is. Ah, perfect. Got that answered. Um, okay, so those I'm seeing are in the the Q and A, the questions in the Q and A. I think I've made it to the end of that one. Um, I think Aaron's been um, in the chat. I think in yeah, it looks like Aaron's been um, in the chat as well, um, answering some questions. So. Um, I appreciate that as always. Um, are there other questions? That, did I miss any questions? Is there anything that still needs to be answered? Um, I see one more. I see a new question here um, around salary. That's a, a really important one um, to ask. And, um, and let me tell you around, let me give you the answer. Um, so in the, the salary is, um, it varies by, it can vary by the employer, um, but the majority of our roles are all with, um, with our hiring partner, Infosys. Um, and so they have a pretty structured way of, um, of, of determining salary. Um, and so it, within each of the programs, you'll see like kind of a, um, a range, uh, like a salary range that is, um, uh, so basically, they look at kind of where's your is your education level in uh, uh, high school? Uh, have you completed the highest level of high school or um, an associate degree? And so those typically the high school within that range, the high school um, or no um, high school or no kind of uh, I guess no associate degree um, is that differentiator. Um, so typically, the um, having had an associate degree is you get on the higher end of that, um, that stated, that range versus um, not having it will start at the lower. But I, I gotta, I mean, you guys are, um, you've seen the ranges, they're, they're not very high. Um, they are, uh, to, be, to be honest, right, it is definitely an investment that, um, that you all would be making in joining this program. Um, you know, I actually talked to somebody earlier today who's career switching and um, was coming from a profitable career um, or profitable industry that, you know, it doesn't have the same opportunities anymore and really wants to get into tech. And I told him, I said, man, the, the, um, the, the, the pay range, right, is, is a lot lower than you might have been earning before. And, um, you know, he said, look, I, you know, I can, I can make that investment in time to be able to get this experience because I know, you know, getting this experience is what is going to make and increase your uh, earning potential, right? That and the, the certification. So um, yeah, I, I really do 
want to call attention to that um, for those that are interested um, to know, you know, just to be really cognizant that the salaries are, are you know, are low, especially for, um, you know, some of the skills that you may already have. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of um, negotiation room right now. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, hopefully, like I said, the, the, um, the additional apprenticeship right, that the value you're getting from there, some of the certifications, everything being taken care of, like if that is a, you know, so we like to think that's part of the consideration for salary. Um, so it's like, hey, your salary might be in the, you know, mid 30s, low 40s, but, um, but the value of the apprenticeship program, these certifications, the coaching, um, we hope that that's part of the overall uh, consideration for compensation. Um, we got another, it uh, looks like a couple other questions around, um, around um, specific instances or um, specific, you know, interviews and cohorts. Um, it would be, uh, I think, Aaron, um, we put in a, uh, yeah, we just put in the, um, the admissions email address. Um, that's going to be the best one. Um, so we can look up, we can look your eyes up individually um, in our systems and be able to buy back. Um, I, again, I hope that, um, you'll be patient with us as we work through it, but, um, but we'll try to go and, um, after this, be able to go and let our, let our team know, um, if we can spend some extra time trying to get, uh, people is answered, then we'll, we'll, we'll do that if we can. Any other questions that we that I missed that I didn't answer, or any other questions that I can't answer? Um, had a, I see another question just around when the program is starting. Um, our next start dates um, for data is this upcoming Monday. Um, and then the program after that, I believe is May 23rd, Monday, May 23rd. Um, the next IT cohort is May 2nd, starting May 2nd. And then I believe it is June 6th is the cohort after that. Um, AWS I mentioned before and um, digital marketing, I'm going to confirm. Um, we should have an update um, the end of this week, but I anticipating um, mid to late May. Uh, a question around does it, uh, a question around the apprenticeship first, how long is it? Um, the apprenticeship itself, and, and we, we kind of call the apprenticeship when you have the full time job and start working, that is 12 months. Um, the boot camp leading up to that um, is another two to three months. And so overall the experience is this uh, 14 to 15 months. Um, I had a question around uh, where you live. Um, so it, it, only matters, it only matters where you're able to work, um, what location or locations you're able to work. That is the, the, the piece that we, um, we look for. So if you, live in Alaska, but you've always wanted to work in Austin um, and you go through the program and you get a job in Austin, well, we, the employer is going to expect to see you in the office in Austin. So, um, so yeah, if you are, um, if there's not a location that is nearby you that's available, but you are open to relocating, um, then you have uh, hopefully a, a fair number of options for, um, for different apprenticeship programs. Um, I see another question around uh, the boot camp. Um, so um, just the, all the boot camps um, and all the uh, outside learning, um, all the, the, the coaching, mentoring, certifications, things like any of that outside of the job, all is done remotely. Um, but again, you know, the jobs themselves um, are, are right now, the, the overwhelming majority will be in person in office.
Uh, had a question around average cost of relocation. Um, I do not know that. Um, I do not know that. I could probably talk from some of my personal experiences is just in moving, but um, but that might not be um, that might not be super helpful. Um, so I probably, yeah, I probably can't provide much guidance on um, on that, unfortunately. Uh, any other questions? slowing down here, um, but I can't say enough how much I appreciate um, you all joining on here and asking your questions and, um, and your patience with us as uh, we move through this process and your interest. Uh, it's, it's really humbling to, uh, to, to see. Okay, I see um, a couple more here. Uh, the apprenticeship after the boot camp, yes, is mandatory. Um, it uh, it is. We are um, as mentioned right there. Are a lot of other awesome boot camp uh, companies out there that that just run boot camps, and um, but that's not the kind of the game that we're in. We're in it for um, for employment, for jobs. Um, that's where uh, that's where we we need everyone's. Um, you know, hope and, and, um, and goal to be, because that's where, um, where, where we work towards, that's where we're all working towards. So, um, yeah, great question though. Um, have another question around, um, if you had another interview and you're putting, uh, looks like you're being put in the next available cohort, um, uh, yes. When, let me, before, as a general rule, yes. Um, one of the things that maybe we can, uh, if this individual can email us uh, directly, um, just so I can kind of confirm uh, to ensure that, um, you know, as mentioned, that the, the different location or locations that you're looking in um, are, uh, you've already been accounted for, um, for that, for the number of available roles there. Ah, okay. So I see it's for um, Dallas. Um, I think um, we'll we'll fo I'll follow up with you and make sure. I don't want to, um, um, but I, I I will follow up and confirm. I believe though that that um, will I believe that will work. I believe we have that spot. Okay. Well, I think. We have, looks like we are, um, we've made it through everything. So I just want to say, again, thank you all um, for joining this. Um, I hope that we've been able to answer your question or at least provide some additional information. Um, and yeah, really looking forward to, um, to hopefully continuing this, this journey with all of you. Um, thank you. Um, we will uh, hopefully, we'll be talking with you soon.